So let's talk about how you can take something from the real life and turn it into something digital. And that is by using this, a 3D scanner. Now this video is sponsored by Creality. And specifically, this is the Creality CR Scan Otter, which is their midline 3D scanner. It comes in at about 900 bucks. Now, even though we're gonna be using this, I wanna show you like the general workflow, as well as some of the use cases where you might find yourself using 3D scanning. And there's actually a whole way to do this that doesn't involve a scanner whatsoever. I did a video a while back on photogrammetry where basically you just take a ton of pictures around an object and you can splice them all together. There's even phone apps that can use the LiDAR sensor, but still if you want to get the most robust and the most detailed scan, a dedicated 3D scanner is going to be the way to go. It's basically just like a series of lenses as well as a few sensors and a few lights. And there's actually two sets of stereo lenses on this, which allows you to have a focal point that is either really close up or further back. So with that, you're getting the ability to scan stuff that is as small as half an inch, all the way up to like six and a half feet wide, and even bigger because it kind of stitches all of these together. All of the data and the processing is gonna happen on your computer. So we are going to be using the Creality Scan software, uh, and then you're just gonna connect the scanner over USB. And we are just gonna go ahead and start a new scan. And there's actually several different modes that you can set up to do this, specifically the face and the body scan. Um, so I've done a few scans of my face. Uh, it's kind of hard because I'm also like moving the scanner, but you can see you can get some pretty nice results. In this case, I'm going to be doing a medium one, I'm going to hit scan and then jump into this. Now they give you a nice indicator on the back uh, to let you know if you are either too close or too far away. And the back will actually turn green when you're in the right spot. Uh, but then you can also watch the software as you're going. Uh, and if I was to go ahead and hit start, then it is going to start tracking this model. And so all you're gonna do is just move this all around uh, and it might lose position. And if that ever happens, uh, you just go back uh, to a position it had before. Now, one thing that's gonna make this hard with my setup is I don't really have any lights like behind him. So if I come all the way around to the back, it's gonna have a hard time kind of staying with it. And so I'm actually going to finish this scan. Um, this is actually on like a Lazy Susan. Um, so I'm gonna do a turntable mode. And that's also helpful because I always have really good light. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop on this one. And you can see there is our data and we'll get into all the processing and stuff here in a minute. Um, but I'm actually gonna come up here and I'm gonna do a new scan. I'm turn turntable on, again, doing medium. And I'm actually gonna do texture. Now it should be a little bit easier because all I've got to do is just turn this around. So I'm gonna fast forward through the uh, scanning process because this will take a little bit to get all of the data in there. Okay, so once all the scanning is done, now we have all of those individual points. If I zoom in, you can see those tiny little dots all over the place that will eventually turn into a mesh for us that is our 3D object. Now they give you a few different tools in terms of processing. Um, you can actually clean up your sketch. So I can select different areas. Uh, maybe I don't want that. I can hit delete and I would actually remove all of those points so that they don't get processed in the future. And then processing can take anywhere from a few seconds to several minutes if you have a slower computer. But at the very end, you'll have a full meshed 3D model that also has a texture that this captured. All right, so we've actually moved into my office with my bigger computer, uh, just so this processing doesn't take quite as long. But um, you can see right here, I have pulled up the point cloud that it generated. Um, and this actually was one that I merged from a couple different scans. Um, that's why this bottom part um, looks a little bit different. Um, and then from here, we are going to make a mesh. And so I've actually already done that. Uh, so you can see what that mesh looks like. And there is our mesh of our baby Yoda. And the bottom section I actually did as a large scale scan. So you can see it didn't get quite the detail that the top did. Uh, a really good example of that is probably like the texture on this fabric here on the back. But overall, um, a really nice scan. And the main thing I was trying to get was the head. Uh, and so that was good as well. Now I'm gonna show you some other examples of ones that I have done as well. You can see uh, here is a couple of my 
face scans that I have done. And so this one was kind of hard because I was watching uh, the screen, uh, but this one I have the color mapping turned on. And if I actually switch over to the point cloud, I didn't get my entire head scan. Again, it's like really hard to get this like behind my head. So there's an option to go in there and fill in the holes when you make a mesh. This was probably uh, the best scan that I had. So this is a little ZV-1 Sony camera. Uh, and if I switch to the mesh, uh, you can see we've got a really nice like quality scan. Uh, it was actually picking up even some of the texture on the surface of the camera. Uh, and I was able to take this and go in and measure different aspects of this camera. And I was finding it was lining up to that like 0.02 millimeter accuracy range that they advertise. And so this is the uh, Lunar Lander. I've got the color currently turned on with this one. If I turn it off again, you can see the mesh a little bit better, but I was really interested to see how it would pick up the studs. It's done a fairly good job, especially like on these end plates. So I was able to pick up a lot of detail. Now, I also wanted to show how a 3D scanner compares to an app. So I've used a bunch of them, but lately I'm finding that Kiri Engine is actually my favorite. And this one's actually a LiDAR scan. So it was using uh, the LiDAR sensors on my camera. And so it got a nice full color scan. Uh, now it looks good here, but I wanted to see how the details compare when I put them side by side in the same environment. So right here is the one that I did with my phone. And you can see you do have like a general shape and kind of make out what it is. But there's a pretty big difference when we look at the one that I did with the 3D scanner. Uh, and if I turn it on so that you can actually see uh, the edges, so you can see like all of the polygons that it was created, there's a pretty substantial difference. Now again, this bottom part I did as a large scale scan. So like the density isn't as high, but if I zoom way into the face, you can see the amount of polygons that we have around around all of these different features. And that's compared to what we've got when we are looking with this. Now there's ways to increase the resolution with your phone and the phone actually took a lot less time than what I did with the 3D scanner. But if you're looking for the method where you can get the most accurate scan possible with the most resolution, a dedicated 3D scanner is going to be a great option for you. Now, once we've got that 3D model, you can take it a step further and clean it up in some programs like Blender or ZBrush, or if it's a fully enclosed SDL, um, you can send it straight to your 3D printer and print out a little version of it. Now where I think it actually gets a little bit more practical practical is if you're actually trying to build things onto things. Props are a little bit different, but maybe you wanted to put like a helmet on this guy. Having an actual scan of his head is gonna allow you to go in and model a helmet that will fit on his head. But a much more practical example, if I wanted to go in and add an attachment or in a grip to this camera, I could do all these measurements with calipers, um, but some of these curves are a little bit more complex and it might take a while to do. So actually doing a full scan would allow me to go in and create a model of the camera that then I can use however I need it. Now, if you are doing props, having a scan of your head is super helpful because you can actually size these helmets to fit exactly on your head. Um, so even if the scan isn't perfect, having the general dimensions is gonna be really helpful. Now, a few things you'll have to keep in mind is when you're doing scans of anything reflective, like these eyes, or even when I was doing my face and the clear glass, it's gonna have a hard time with that. So one thing they provide and something that I actually did when I scanned R2-D2 and his head are these tracking markers that are basically these little reflective stickers. And as long as there are like four to five of these markers in the frame when you're doing the scan, um, I can use this to track the geometry. So I found that really helpful, especially with Arsu, where you have that really reflective aluminum surface that is fairly large. So it's pretty easy to lose track of it. So another use case that I see a lot of people do is like automotive parts. And using markers like that, it's gonna make that a lot easier. Now, if you do want to see what a free version of this can look like, we're gonna dive into my photogrammetry video right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.